Do you speak French a little bit? Or? No, not at all. Hello, Roberta. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's nice to have you here today. I mean, it would be better to have you here in front to, to talk about all these projects. Before discussing about this new project, Make Escape, I would like to first introduce you to, to the, our community. So you are an uh, avid timepiece enthusiast and one of the most influential watch journalists in America. You won an award for excellence in watch writing. You wrote six books, as well as countless articles in magazines, websites such as uh, Watches International in Forbes. And last but not least, you founded A Timely Perspective, an authoritative source of on watches, which you still operate today and that gives a unique insight into the timepiece industry. Did I forget something? Oh no, I think that covers it. I mean, there's a lot more, <laughs> but that's, that's yeah. the general idea. <laughs> okay, cool. So you discovered Code 41 because of the Mechascape. How do you see Code 41 in this historical watchmaking world? We're in an era where the independent brands, the small brands, are thinking outside of the box. So I think Code 41 has elevated the concept of a watch. It's putting Code 41 on the map. And I love the fact that, you know, you're working with your watch lovers and taking it into account what people have to say and think it's it's a collective. The Mechascape is our latest project. The aim was to create a kind of mechanical landscape. Uh, you are one of the first to have the prototypes in your hands. So what is your feeling about it? Seeing it in person and, and getting to really feel, touch, see it, it's a very different timepiece. It's very unique. It can open up another category in watchmaking because you're not using clock parts, you're using watch parts. And I love the fact that you've laid out all of these components like a landscape. It's just mm -hmm. got this really beautiful appeal. You see the mechanics, but you see the geom geometry of it. Yeah, the goal was to, to have this object, which is not a table clock, which is not a, a pocket watch, but just an object that watch enthusiasts will love. When you see watch collectors, of course, they have mostly wrist watches. How do you see this fitting into a, a watch watch collection? It fits into a collection from a perspective of being so different and unique that you can just say, oh, look at this and have a conversation. And certainly it sits nice on any shelf above the wristwatch drawers. <laughs> It's difficult to say today uh, where it will be in, in two or three years time. Well, how do you see the, the evolution of an object like this? I think the evolution may be in obviously materials, more unusual shapes, you know, the use of color. I think there are a lot of places you can go with it. Do you see other brands going into this uh, category? I haven't seen anyone go in this direction. I mean, the fact that it is so thin, it's like a business card, you know, it's, uh, nice. yeah, you might be the leaders. <laughs> anyway, for me, I think I, I, I really had uh, all the, the feedbacks from you that I wanted on this project, which is was very interesting since you know so much about watches. I'm very pleased of your reactions. Thank you again that you spend a bit of time with us. Well, thank you and congratulations on this. As I said, it's a cool piece. It's different and, you know, um, I wish you luck with it. I hope we can still um, make even better in the next project and we try to be as innovative as this one on the next ones too. Talk to you soon and thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Yeah.